in this video let us discuss biasing in MOS amplifier circuits. An essential step in the design of a MOSFET amplifier circuit is the establishment of an appropriate DC operating point for the transistor. This is the step known as biasing or bias design. An appropriate DC operating point or bias point is characterized by a stable and predictable DC current ID and by a DC drain to source voltage VDS that ensures the operation in the saturation region for all expected input signal levels. Before we arrive at various biasing methods, let us discuss bias stability. We know that for the transistor common source amplifier, the voltage gain AB is given by minus mu n COX times W by L into VGS minus VT times RD. Let us call this as equation 1. The saturation current equation is given by ID equals half of mu n COX times W by L into VGS minus VT whole square. From this ID equation, VGS minus VT whole square can be derived which is equal to 2 ID divided by mu n COX times W by L. To remove square, we shall take square root on left hand side. Therefore, VGS minus VT equals root of 2 times ID divided by mu n COX times W by L. Let us label this equation as 2. Substituting equation 2 in 1 for VGS minus VT, we can obtain the following equation. The voltage gain AV is given by minus mu n COX times W by L. Instead of VGS minus VT, we have root of 2 ID divided by mu n COX times W by L into RD. On simplification of this, AV can be obtained as AV equals minus RD root of 2 mu n COX times W by L into ID. The ID here is called as DC drain current. Let us call this equation as 3. From equation 3, it is evident that the voltage gain of an amplifier is proportional to the root of DC drain current. Next. The drain current which we have seen here in equation 3 is dependent on temperature. As temperature changes, the DC drain current also changes. When the DC drain current changes, the voltage gain of the amplifier also changes. Therefore, the drain current flowing in the amplifier depends on temperature. Another factor which is most important for the amplifier is K dash. For a batch of devices, K dash may have, K dash may vary for different values of transistors. Therefore, the common condition or general condition to arrive at for the bias stability to be smaller is delta ID by ID should be as small as possible, where delta ID is the change in drain current due to the variation in K dash and temperature. ID is the required drain current or desired drain current flowing in the amplifier circuit. Therefore, delta ID by ID, if it is smaller, then we can say that the amplifier is stable. Next, let us discuss various biasing schemes. The first biasing scheme is biasing by fixing gate source voltage. This approach is most straightforward approach to bias the MOSFET. In this approach, the gate to source voltage is fixed to VGS to the value required to provide desired drain current. This voltage value can be derived from the power supply voltage VDD through the use of an appropriate voltage divider bias. Here, RG1 and RG2 
place a voltage divider roll to fix the voltage at the gate of the transistor. From voltage division rule, the voltage at the gate of the transistor can be derived using this equation. VGG, the voltage at the gate equals VDD, supply voltage times RG2 divided by RG1 plus RG2. This supply voltage, the gate voltage can be derived from the supply voltage using the voltage divider bias technique. This approach is not a good approach for biasing a MOSFET. To understand this reason for this statement, let us recall the drain current equation. ID equation in saturation region is ID equals 1 by 2 mu n COX which is also equal to K dash W by L times VGS minus VT whole square. Let us call this as equation 1. If we observe this equation, the threshold voltage of the MOSFET, the oxide capacitance COX and the transistor aspect ratio W by L. All this vary widely among the devices of supposedly the same size and type. This is certainly the case for discrete devices in which larger spreads in the values of these parameters occur among devices of the same manufacturer's part number. The spread is also large in integrated circuits, especially among devices fabricated on different wafers and certainly between different batch of wafers. Furthermore, both the threshold voltage and mobility mu n depend on temperature with the result that if you fix the value of gate source voltage, the drain current ID becomes very much temperature dependent. So to emphasize this bias technique, let us uh, look at the more details of this. If you plot a graph of uh, ID versus VGS showing the extreme values for a batch of MOSFETs of the same type, we can see that the device 1 is one device is the first device which is considered exhibit this characteristics. Another device which is let us say device 2 exhibit another characteristics. Deviation among these two for the fixed gate voltage VGG creates two different drain currents ID1 and ID2. For VGS fixed or VGG equals VGS for the device 1 let us call the drain current as ID1. For device 2 for a fixed VGG the current flowing through the MOSFET is ID2. Therefore delta ID seen from this characteristics is very large. As we have discussed earlier the ratio delta ID by ID to be smaller for the stable circuit. Since in this biasing technique we find that delta ID by ID is large therefore the biasing scheme using fixed VGS is unstable. So in the next video let us see the biasing scheme by fixing the gate voltage and connecting a resistance in the source terminal.